Okay, let's try and summarize some of that then. What we've seen is that we can use uh, algebra to calculate IRR. Uh, we know that money multiple is another key measure of return for our private equity friends. And David, one more time, we've worked it out. We know that if somebody's looking for a three times money multiple, what's that translate to in terms of an IRR? Over five years, it will be 25%, absolutely right. Okay, so two, two main ways of calculating return. And of course, there's a neat little function in Excel which will help us with those IRRs. But hopefully, we understand now a little bit more what it's about. I want to try and summarize this up. I was encouraging you to think, and I started by asking how do private equity firms make money. Matt told me buy low, sell high. And I think we've unpacked that a little bit now buy low, sell high. I was encouraging you to think in terms of a model with your returns, and I was asking you to imagine a model that showed an Excel, this is not an Excel modeling course, but I was asking you to imagine a model that showed a private equity firm putting 20 into its investment, getting 60 out, and what we've looked at is all the different ways you could measure return on that. All right, so I'm encouraging you now again to think about how, um, how a model might be put together and some of you have seen this already, I think, how a model might be put together. So what I've got on the board here, or I'm starting to put together, is a, um, a framework for our model, our framework in, in, uh, for our Excel model. It's just, it's just to show you the structure and how it might be mapped out. Um, and what I'm going to start with is, in my model, is modeling entry. So I'm going to look at entry and exit. And I think you guys know, or some of you know, this is how private equity firms do it in their models. We're modeling entry and we're modeling exit. And what we're going to think about for our valuation is we're thinking about a hundred million business. And I'm thinking that that business, again, this is the good old days, might have generated uh, EBITDA, one of our profit measures, of 10 million might have been valued at a 10 times multiple. What do you think of that multiple, Matt? Pretty punchy. Pretty, pretty punchy. It is pretty high. And our valuation on the business, of course, is the same 100 million that we've got on our previous chart up there at the back of the room. 100 million. Now, just so we know, we'll talk about valuation later in the program. It's not the subject for now. EBITDA times a multiple. What kind of value is that one called in corporate finance speak? It's enterprise, it's something called enterprise value or EV, isn't it? Okay, so we're looking at a business, we're looking at a, 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 an asset which is valued at 100 million. Initially we're thinking about a house, now we're thinking about a business. And again, we were in the good old days, we're going to uh, imagine that the amount of debt that that business could raise would be 80 million, which is which again is uh, ridiculously high in today's market, but the numbers work. We're going to subtract off that debt. The equity in, of course, is going to be 20. All right? No prizes for guessing what it's going to look like on the exit. There's room in your pack just to, just to write that down, that little framework. What we're doing here is just taking it a step further, looking at how you'd model this in practice. And on the exit, I'll ask you some questions. EBITDA uh, times our multiple equals, again, enterprise value when we sell. We're going to subtract off the debt, and here we go. We're going to have our 60 million equity out. You know that's a three times money multiple. All right. So uh, you've, you're, you're, you're just getting a record of that. That's brilliant. How we'd model this, how we'd put this together in a model. I'll just give you a couple of minutes to do that, so keep writing, just get that framework into your packs. The next thing I'm going to ask you is to uh, brainstorm. Uh, what I'd like you to do is uh, use these post-it notes that we've got. And what I'd like you to do is tell me as many answers as possible. There's normally about five or six out there. In terms of driving returns, what are all the sorts of things? Looking at that framework, what are all the sorts of things that might drive return? Matt's already got part of it for us, buying low and selling high. We've talked on some of it on the way through. I reckon there's probably about five or six post-it notes out there, probably per person. How are we going to make money out of this deal that we've just modeled? Ready for some post-it note action, Ollie?
Yeah? All right. See if you can get, I don't know, you'll, you'll be exercising your brain. See if you can get five or six. If there was a competition here, there's no competition, and there's certainly no prize. If there was a competition, many post-it notes as possible. Looking at that chart, what's going to drive return? Ready for post-it note action? Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's do that. Just, just, just write down on the post-it notes as many ideas as, as you can, uh, what's going to drive returns. All right, I'm really interested to hear what you guys are thinking. I'm really interested to hear that. Uh, this is how I'm looking at this little model framework here. Uh, there's a bunch of things that are driving the increase in money multiple. One of those things is how much debt I can get in from the start, how much debt I can get in. We already saw that that was going to have an impact on return. The more debt that we could get in to start with, the, the higher the money multiple uh, or the IRR. So we saw that early on today. Um, paying debt down along the way, obviously if we, could, um, if we could pay some debt down along the way, our equity proceeds would be higher. Uh, and I think there's a few other sort of broad categories here. Um, maybe we could sell at a higher multiple than we bought at. Maybe we could sell at a higher multiple than we bought at. Sometimes people call that multiple arbitrage. Absolutely right. Thank you. Multiple arbitrage. Not to be confused with the money multiple. The money multiple, of course, is a measure of return. Uh, when we're talking about money multiple arbitrage, what we're talking about is selling at a higher multiple than we would buy in at. And I suppose the other thing that I can see on here, if you like, there's a few broad categories driving the uh, equity return, the return on our money multiple, a few broad categories, debt pay down, how much debt I can get in to start with, multiple arbitrage and general business growth. Could you guys come up with your post-it notes please and stick them up here and let's see if they fit into some of these categories. General business growth was the other one. Come up here and stick them up and um, we'll see whether they slot in there neatly or not. Okay, so what have we got coming up? Yeah, reduction in debt, EBITDA growth, well done. Yeah, expanding the business, comes in under growth, selling at a high multiple, exit multiple, EBITDA growth, multiple arbitrage, early debt repayment, well done, you guys did well, all right, excellent.